There we go. <laughs> no, but dry bombs aren't that powerful. All you do have a shrap, plastic shrapnel. Okay, see at the very bottom of this? You can see it kind of boiling? See how the bottom's kind of... Yeah, if you guys want to come up closer, you can. But see how it's kind of boiling like that? So there's your liquid CO2. So that all that liquid down there is just carbon dioxide. So again, not a lot of people see liquid CO2. This is kind of, you know, kind of a big deal. Congratulations to all you guys. Um, you know, again, dry ice common, gas common, but liquid, not so much. So the idea is that we have this really pressurized, you can hear it, right? It's stuck. A lot of gas is escaping. Um, but there's so much pressure, and it's at such and such a temperature that we're able to form the liquid. So I don't know exactly what temperature it's at right now. In theory, we could stick a thermometer in there if it was nice and pressure sealed, um, and find out what it is. But, but this is our liquid CO2. And actually, liquid CO2 is considered, liquid CO2 or supercritical CO2 is considered one of our, our sort of green, our greener um, cleaning solvents, because is liquid, C, is CO2 polar or nonpolar? <coughs> <laughs> Overall, it's non-polar, right? Because it's it has no net dipole, mm -hmm. so it's a non-polar thing, which is what helps us um, dissolve like greases and weird things that are in our clothes. So, uh, in dry cleaning, they used to use a lot of chlorinated solvents that ended up being not so great for us, and they stay in the environment for a long time. And so, some greener companies are moving to using liquid CO two to clean clothes instead, because it goes in, it evaporates, and it's gone, and it's very non-toxic, right? The idea is. CO2 is not going to hurt us unless oh, exactly. we're breathing a bag of it. <laughs> we yeah. have to keep it at that temperature in order to keep it. Exactly. So there's a higher energy cost because you have to pressurize the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, in general, you can pull it out of the air and then you can release it back into the air. As opposed to some of these things stay in our water systems forever, you know, for seemingly forever. So that's our liquid CO2. So that liquid CO2, you can imagine if I brought a candle up to this, again, it would kind of snuff it out. All of the CO2 is hanging out on the bottom. When we dissolve carbon dioxide into water, it uh, is absorbed into the water and actually forms carbonic acid, making our solutions much more acidic. And all of this water on, or all of this liquid on the countertop is from my water spills, right? No, nothing yeah. is from the dry ice, is the idea. Um, we have a little bit, we have a little bit left here <coughs> if anyone wants to kind of, if anyone who hasn't seen dry ice up close, would like to take a little closer look at it. I'm fine with that. Or are you guys cool? Does anyone want to see? Um, huh? Just like make something go outside. I mean, it's not just such a small piece. Anyone? No? Okay. We're cool. We don't have to put dry ice. You guys are very sophisticated. Um, then let's go ahead and we'll, let's take a 10 minute break while I clean all this stuff up and we'll come back and start chapter 6.